Hi, welcome back. Right. So we were looking at the uh, asking the question, you know, what does it mean to be rooted in him? And you were answering. Yeah. <laughs> Colossians six, oh, sorry, Colossians two six. So he's saying, yeah, yeah. Rizzo. So what does it mean to be rooted in him? I mean, rooted means grounded. So what does it mean to be hidden in him? Yeah, okay, okay. We just give the mic. <laughs> mm. Like Yeah, the, I, I get that. The deep roots but, when we are mm. doing construction, we mm. will uh, do this bores foundation and all, right? So um, our basement mm. or our uh, mm, how can we values, morals mm. should be I mean rooted means mm. that that that's where we come from, that's where we stand on. Mm. That's I where see. we 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 uh, we live our life through that, through those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to be rooted? No? Figuratively become stable. <laughs> like not moving that side, this side. Stand yeah. So, uh, like, first of all, being rooted gives us the picture of being steadfast, being stable, being in one place. Like, you're not moving, you're not um, changing your perspective, you're not changing your, you know, like, foundations uh, because uh, when you make a foundation strong you know the building is strong building is not shifting right it's not shaky so uh, to be rooted is that but also when we when you look at when you look at okay drawing from the plant or a tree and you say it's rooted it is drawing nutrition it not only is it established in one place not only is it you know made making firm in one place but it's also drawing life you know, drawing nutrition, everything, you know, for the growing of the plant, for bearing fruit, everything comes from that place, right? Uh, so, so when we say rooted in him, right, so it means that. It means very practically, if we want to live our life, we're saying, I'm drawing, you know, I'm drawing what is required for my life from him, right, from, from Jesus, from the person of the Lord Jesus, you know, that's that's very important. So, which means that my life revolves, uh, in, in other words, you know, we, we're saying, okay, Jesus at the center, we sing it, I know, Jesus at the center of my life, which means choices, decisions, everything, I, I'm referring, you know, I'm basing it on Jesus, I'm referring to Jesus. So, Jesus is a big part of my life, right? It's not something that I add on, but really is at the center, the core of my life, right? So it also means that I'm living a word-centered life, right? A word-centered life, because he's the living word, right? So if my roots are going to be in him, I'm living a word-centered life, okay? And it's a beautiful thing, right, to really live a word-centered life. It's a God honoring thing to live a word centered life, right? So um, we, we are saying, okay, it's it's not just, you know, I'm just looking at the notes. It's not just about the church or denomination, but it's really about the person of Lord Jesus. You know, that's the thing. So, you know, so our friendship with Him, our intimacy with Him, you know, everything is revolving around Jesus. Okay. So, uh, that is why intimacy with the Lord, you know, leads to a walk of freedom. Right? That we where we will we don't want to displease Him. We're, in, we're out of love for Him. We don't want to displease Him. We don't want to do anything to, you know, to to you know. It's it's like sometimes you sense that closeness. I, I remember, you know, a couple last two Sundays actually, 
you know um i said lord i i don't want to do anything to lose out on this closeness that i feel you know it was doing the worship and i just felt you know the, so much of uh things that the lord did in my heart where i felt the closeness with jesus and i said god i don't want to lose this out i don't want to say anything do anything uh lord to lose that sense of closeness but the same thing happened you know I, i just preaching and i just felt this sense of closeness with the lord and again i remember making that prayer or just you know just in my heart saying god i don't want to ever lose that closeness lose that close friendship i don't want to do anything i don't want to not do anything in order to you know lose that and i remember todd white you know um, i mean if you seen todd white uh, videos and right so, so todd white majorly into drugs you know yeah but uh, his old past life was you know drug dealer drug addict and completely wasted life you know um so he talks about how when he came to jesus the sense of uh cleansing that he experienced the sense of closeness that he had with the lord and um, so he is in this drug rehab christian drug rehab called teen teen challenge started by dave wilkerson and um so how many of you read the dave wilkerson's book run baby run nikki cruz hey you should read yeah these are classics really you know uh, about uh, about actually revival in the in the in the you know what you would call as the inner inner city in, in the us it talks about but um you know i think it's something that that you guys uh, i mean we should all of us should read very inspiring right so uh, anyway um so he was in that drug rehab and he came to the lord uh, and he comes to the lord he's had this amazing supernatural you know uh, freedom from drugs no 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 um, what do you call uh, they call it cold turkey no after effects right no no cravings nothing right nothing at all just just like that he is delivered of drugs but more than that his mind is clear that he's not uh, he's not oppressed right in his mind and uh, and it, it so happened that one day you know they in a van they go to ch- some church and uh, you know they all the others are there in the van and then they see some girls by this r- roadside and the others are like whistling and waving to the girls you know they're all drug rehab right but he's not so much even turning in the direction because he says you know i don't want to lose that sense of purity and holiness that i'm experiencing now because for years he has been in drugs for years he has been in so much of you know junk and uh, the lord has delivered him right so so being rooted is to have a sense of that saying god you know i don't want to let, lose the sense of closeness i don't want to you know displease you in any way and i have experienced your love i don't want i just want to con- continue delighting in you right so more than you know strategies step 1 step 2 step 3 you know, all that is good all that is good right uh, being led by god renewing our minds all that is scriptural good but the core of it is god i don't want to displease you you know i don't want to lose this friendship i don't want to displease you right okay so some practical things are to sever which means to cut away ungodly influences right the lord jesus talked talked about that hey if, if your hand if your eyes causing you to sin pluck it out wow. uh, you know typically if, we, if all of us would be have to obey it <laughs> you know everybody is going out with eyes gouged out he says if your hand causes you to sin cut it out the idea is this be surgical be clinical be surgical when it comes to you know sinful influence or temptation be surgical about it because you know that it is going to cause death right so um so that's what you know we sever we cut away all ungodly influences when you know something is something is poison you will not go after it right you know you know but when something uh, when people say okay it is bad it is poison please do not you will not 
at least you know i think most people will not but then we see in the world yeah want to try it and see hey actually it's not poison <laughs> right you see on a cigarette packet that it's written there it is injurious to health you know it is cancer causing it has tar it has you know nicotine and all these are deadly substances the roads are paved with <laughs> but you're putting it in your lungs right so uh, some people you know continue to do that but then you know you will not if you know that it's something is wrong and it is causing death in you you would not touch it right okay so the thing is to stay consecrated the thing is to have that clinical attitude in our minds you know you know in our hearts saying okay hey this is this is like poison i'm not going to try it out this is causing death in me i don't want to go and I, this is causing me to lose my friendship or it changes the friendship with god sense of fellowship and closeness that i have i don't want to you know get into that right okay any questions so so crucifying the flesh is that right we looked at a few things about renewing our minds we looked at being led by the spirit we also looked at you know how by the spirit we put to death the things of the body right so it comes it is not convenient it is not comfortable uh it is yes painful at times but you know that's the thing right? and i just want to you know say one thing that is um this word being consistent okay so yeah being consistent you know that's the thing like right being consistent in it now uh, being disciplined enough to be consistent now that's a, that's a challenge for a lot of people because being consistent means when it's raining when it's not raining all weather being consistent is when i'm happy when i'm sad yeah uh, when i'm in a great mood when i'm in a bad foul mood being consistent is in all times that i choose to walk like this that's the thing because if we would do that if we would make that shift and say you know no matter what i'm going to do it because if you see successful people if you see achievers in all things you know when you look at sports if you look at you know whatever area you see that there's one thing in their life and that is consistent being consistent that builds strength right? that builds character right that is where you know all our all our victories we are shaped for victory we are positioned for victory when we are consistent right and the bible has a word for it it says be steadfast do not grow weary while doing good be steadfast continue on right um uh, and hebrews 12 talks about it says run the race with yeah perseverance or endurance right have that stamina run with endurance why what happened um so so that's the thing it's, it's another word yes perseverance run with that um so don't give up so uh, that's one one key quality if we would if we would make up our minds you know if we would decide like when we choose we are when we make a decision we would actually do it right to be consistent and the fact is this it's not just us the holy spirit is with us to help us right um and then you know we can no matter what we set our minds to with the help of the holy spirit yes we can achieve it right okay which takes us to the next topic okay which is living daily with a renewed mind okay i just want to say that renew daily with a renew, living with a renewed mind is such a delight right it's such a delight right um where your mind is so strong that it rejects lies right it, your mind is so renewed sorry not strong renewed that it attracts or receives the truth absorbs the truth okay so we looked at those verses romans 12 was was this one and two the proof of the renewed mind what is the proof of the renewed mind anyone no no the proof of the yeah you say that okay 
mind is renewed in one area what is the proof of that changed what change yeah. yeah change behavior change living right so that's the thing so it's a visible change in the way we live right it could be in words it could be in action it could be you know however we process things so the proof of the renewed mind is transformed behavior transformed living right so that's why paul says be transformed yeah nina has written transform life so be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that's the proof right that's the proof of a renewed mind okay um so it is important for us to live daily in that place living daily in a transformed mind okay um ephesians 4 and verse 23 it says be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness okay that you put on this new man which means that you know this understanding of who you are in christ jesus that you are a new creation let that renew your mind be renewed in the spirit of your mind okay so it's taking on the thoughts and ways of god like we discussed taking on the attitudes of christ philippians 2 talks about how he he, he took on the form of a bond servant right though he was god of all creation he kept that aside and took on the form of a bond servant when he came on came to the earth okay it also means taking on the knowledge of god who has made me a new person okay so daily to walk to live with a renewed mind okay so uh, you know as believers i uh, you know as people who are you know getting equipped trained for ministry but this is a key thing right this is a key key thing to live daily with a renewed mind and it it will actually build so much of strength it will stabilize so many areas in our lives you know where we are thinking that oh this area you know i i i go down very quickly in the sense emotionally i just go down it just pulls me down well living with a renewed mind daily making that decision making that choice uh, actually will stabilize and establish our life okay uh, and we will see victories in areas that we thought that we will never see victories guaranteed right we will see victories um, and we will see so much of spiritual growth and maturity and it will be so shocking you know so you'll be unrecognizable that's why the bible says be transformed it uses the word metamorpho being metamorphosis right it's a radical change radical change in behavior and that will be that is definitely possible okay so what does it involve what does it take okay first of all it is a continuous process okay it's a continuous process which means it's a lifestyle it is day in and day out what what process is it of receiving revelation renewing you know taking on certain things leaving out certain things uh, when it comes to the knowledge of god when it comes to the thoughts and ways of god now his attitude everything attitude of christ right it's a continuous thing okay it is also a process of the conquest of the mind right whatever we learnt taking every thought captive developing a positive mindset renewing our mind right all that is there right and it is also thirdly learning yeah sorry conquest meaning victory conquer who's a conqueror right is is the one who's victorious so a conquest in battle is one who is victorious in the battle so a conquest of the mind because the mind is a battlefield that's why you know conquest of the mind so it is it is a process a continuous process right so we can have simple things like so we can say simple you know we get up in the morning and we say okay today is you know when it comes to a positive mindset today is the day this is the day that the lord has made i will rejoice and be glad in it you start the day like that right and you say okay my mind will be renewed with the truth of god's word the whole of today my mind is going to be renewed with the truth of god's word i'm going to reject the lies and deceptions of the enemy i'm going to receive the truth of god's word and i'm going to my mind is going to be so strong and established in the truth of god's word like right? you start the day with that right um okay so we looked at conquest of the mind the third area is to avoid the pitfall of uh 
presumption, which means that we balance reason. No, this is a challenge, right? Reason, having a renewed mind, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and avoiding presumption. So presumption is, you know, I assume something to be true or right when it's not. I presume. Yeah, it's it's my own. It's a you know, it's it's not an established truth, but I presume it. We can presume that okay, I will do this, or else I will make the mistake again, and then we see it's happening. Can I presume? Um, that you fear something will, you know, something like that. Yeah. You. Um. Yeah. See. Sorry. Yeah. So presumption actually means that. See, I kind of, uh, you know, the, the Google says that it's assuming something to be true when it's not. So, you know, saying that, okay, something is the truth, is uh, stating something is the truth when it's not. So that is presumption. So what you're saying is, um, you know, having an expectation that something will go wrong, having an expectation some that I will fail, fail kind of a thing. So, so that's slightly different. Yeah. Okay, so so the thing is this that um, you know when we ha when when our mind is renewed, okay, we have our mind is renewed to God's word. Okay, we are led by the Spirit of God, and we also have what is called renewed reasoning. Okay, we can actually reason with our minds according to the carnality of our mind, according to fleshly thinking, right? Or we can actually reason, and it can be a spiritual reasoning according to a spiritual mind. Right. Now, the thing is that God gave us the ability to reason, no doubt about it, to analyze things, to come to certain conclusions, to weigh the advantages and disadvantages. Right? He's given us the reason. He's given us the ability to reason. Right? And uh, you know, several scriptures, like Proverbs 13, 16, every prudent man acts with knowledge, right? but a fool lays open his folly. Proverbs 19.2, it's not good for a soul to be without knowledge. Okay. Uh, Proverbs 24.6, by wise counsel you will wage your own war and so on. Right? So God is not, accept, is not opposed or he's not opposite of reasoning. He's not opposed to reasoning, using our mind, wisdom. But the thing is this, when we reason, we reason with a renewed mind. Okay. So that's the thing. Right? We can either reason in a very pessimistic way, and but are we reasoning with a renewed mind? Right. So reasoning is okay. Right. To be led by the spirit, right? It is fine. And when we led by the spirit, so this is what sometimes happens when we are led by the spirit, and the spirit asks the Holy Spirit leads us to do certain things, which goes against basic reasoning. Yes or no? Yeah, it happens. Like the supernatural is above the natural, right? So when we are reasoning with our experience and practical wisdom, it seems unreasonable. Seems unreasonable. Like, for example, some of the examples are in the book of John, right? The Lord Jesus says, okay, fill the water pots with water at the wedding at Cana, right? Fill the water pots with water. Now draw them out. <laughs> he hasn't done anything. He says, now draw them out, serve it. He tells Peter, right? Peter, and he's fished all night, but Peter says, okay, now go into the deep. Let's your, let your net down for a catch, right? Now, who's the fisherman? It's Peter. Who's the man of the experience? He's Peter. So for, it goes against all reasoning for Peter because I fished all night, like maybe 12 hours, maybe, I don't know. And I'm tired. And you're saying, do the same thing again. But then he does it, right? So some of these things are, you know, when this we need to understand that. Okay, it goes beyond our practical, you know, wisdom or even sometimes self-preservation, right? For Peter, it says, 
Lord, if you are Lord, you allow, you know, you command me to walk, he says. And then Jesus says, command, commands him. And then he starts walking on water, right? So, so the, that is true. You know, why we, it will, it will not, you know, when we say, I'm a reasonable man, I'm a man of reason, I'm a man of logic, it doesn't fit into that compartment, right? It goes beyond that, okay? Um, so we need to understand that, yeah. Sometimes it we need to suspend our logic and reason when we are very sure that yes, this is the Holy Spirit who is leading. You know, one an example that happened is for me. Um, um, like I was working in sales, right? I was working in sales, and uh, at one one point, I think this was the I think second company that I worked with, or third company, sorry, I worked with, and uh, I was actually selling some very high, highly priced toys, like. Uh, I don't know if you remember Hot Wheels, those yeah, Hot Wheels, those cars, right? Small cars. Right? So, so cars are the that was that was a starting item, basic item. It was those times it was fifty rupees. Now it's I think hundred and fifty, two hundred, and all that. Yeah. So it had all these things. So it not only had you know all these loops and everything, very interesting, uh, but it also had some you know some highly priced ones like it had jets, planes. Which you could launch into the air, and uh, it was each those days. I'm talking about many years back. Those days, it was some thousand bucks each each toy. Right? Parents were buying that and giving it for their kids. So it was, you know, it was thousand that night. So it was big money. I'm talking about more than twenty years back, right? So, and the thing is, this dealer he ordered he ordered one. I don't know. You know, some mismatch in the way I sent the order. No, sorry. Yeah, he, he ordered 10 of those, but he ordered only the planes. Okay, he ordered only the planes and he said, I want 10. The planes are half the cost, 499 or something. The, this one is thousand bucks, 999. Right? It's the launcher which comes with, with the plane, etc. So I, I thought it was. So he said, uh, you know, I, I need I need 10 of those. So I, I ordered the big one. So he's, he's, he's and he says, you take it back. Now, uh, my company was very, very strict against taking back sales returns, as they called it. taking back. No chance, you know. You get uh, you get penalized. You get this thing, and so I was like, God, what do I do? You know, I, I I'm actually new in the organization, and I didn't want to face my boss. And everything. then I said, uh, I just somehow, you know, asked him, uh, Have you seen Sapphire Sapphire Toys? It used to be on Brigade Road, on Corner Shop. Now it's on. Uh, it's 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 near the lifestyle, you know. I uh, think it's a bigger store now. So that's that's the owner. So I'm telling him, you know, please keep it for one week. Yeah, I'm just begging him, please keep it for one week. He says, no, no, take it back. I don't want take it. So please keep it for one week. After one week, if it doesn't sell, I'll take it back. Okay, so then I'm thinking, God, what do I do now? Okay, he said, okay. So he's fine. So I went there, and uh, I'm just looking at the shelf, you know. One day in the morning, no shoppers, and then um, I'm looking at everything, and and suddenly I ha I get this sense of God saying, "Put your hands on the toys and declare, declare it to be sold in Jesus' name." Okay, can you just so I'm I'm there, and then look, God, is it you? Is it just my thinking? And you know, I'm just learning about faith and all that, and then I said, "Okay, God, I'll do it." Okay, so I just made sure nobody was watching. <laughs> I put my hands on the on these toys on the shelf and said, "Be sold in Jesus' name. Be sold this week in the name of Jesus." Okay, and um, and then I turned around. Nobody was there, but then I, suddenly I saw there's a CC camera, CCTV. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know. Okay, maybe he was watching or not. Then I just left the place. Then he calls me. You know, he calls me every Monday. He'll call, and you know, I get the order and everything. Monday he calls me and said, "Hey, you know, JK." Uh, we sold everything. We sold each each one of them. So I need more. You know, so this time you give me ten. Ten of that only you give me. I we sold each and every piece. Wow. Like, so the thing is, you know, I was, I was very happy. It worked and everything. But the thing is, it goes beyond reasoning, right? So it goes beyond reasoning. Spirit is Spirit of God is saying you lay hands and and declare it be sold. So. You know, I didn't learn it in management school. Didn't learn it, in, you know, from the. But well, this is what. So some of the some of the things goes beyond outside of our 
reasoning outside of our experience yes that is true right so speaking specific instructions etc um but you know we need to i'm just coming to that thing of um, you know uh, presumption right when we come to uh, presumption we are assuming god said this and we are going ahead and trying it out it's not based on the leading of the spirit it's not based on well it could even be based on the word of god saying i see a biblical principle there and uh, you know i want to do it so that's what presumption is okay so um, just going uh, just uh, you know to uh, before we go that uh, go there uh, into presumption so um, when we talk about the our reasoning okay our reasoning and when we when we reason it helps us to live in this world uh, our renewed mind is able to keep this whole reasoning thing in subjection to the word of god a renewed mind right so we we say okay my mind is renewed to the truth of god's word my reasoning and logic you know it is saying no don't right but my renewed mind brings that in subjection to the truth of god's word right reasoning and logic and so on so i'm able to exercise faith otherwise i will not be able to exercise faith because if if the reasoning and logic kicks in and says don't don't confess just you know cancel it out i won't be able to exercise faith right but now because of the mind being renewed to the truth of the revelation of god's word i'm able we are able to exercise actually exercise faith like believe for the impossible okay so that's something that we need to understand right so we it leads us opens the door for the supernatural work of god in our lives right okay now coming to um some coming to presumption okay so we are assuming something is true we are assuming that we have heard god we are assuming that well this is what god has spoken right so it's a very subjective thing right when a, when a person is presuming something right we we say okay i've heard from god i you know specific instruction and this actually happened right there was this couple who uh, who were newly married okay so both of them said god is calling us to resign our jobs and go to delhi no not been go to delhi okay and there god wants us to like start a work and also uh, you know career wise you know that he will open new doors that we will you know we will work and then we will do ministry so both of them very strong you know saying that this is what god has said but they went there they and they you know nothing happened but by the time they had already resigned their whatever work they had uh they were in good jobs very high paying jobs and you know very sincere believers right but they just felt i don't know maybe you know we can't judge right uh where they went wrong how they went wrong maybe they were excited maybe they were so adventurous and they wanted to do you know so zealous right zealous to do god's work um but this is what happened right so there was a the specific they said that okay this is a specific instruction god has given us this thing we need to go and it took them years to um you know get back to whatever was whatever were the were the damages right because both of them lost their jobs uh it took some time to get back so they had to come back live in their parents home or something like that happened and then one person got a job the other person did not and oops um and so it took them a while to get back to normal see right um and so on so we need to understand that that presumption is not something that god wants us to live in yeah okay so pastor like uh, how uh, we can distinguish between like especially from this example even it's like sometimes even we may feel like okay or uh, this is the work that god was calling me to mm-hmm. or else this is what god is asking me to do and uh, sometimes it can be presumption also yeah so how we can distinguish mm. so how do we distinguish between our own feelings and uh, you know 
yeah so god will confirm it right when we ask god for confirmation he will confirm it he will confirm it either again through his word take you back to the word take you back to the promise he will again confirm it through supernatural means maybe maybe a dream a vision right a prophetic word a word of knowledge whatever he will again confirm it through the body the people right that's why we have the fellowship with other believers and god so whatever he has spoken again you can even people you can even confirm uh, he con- confirms with people whom you have a covenant relationship with like maybe a spouse family member right someone who is a yeah, who you have a covenant relationship with right? where god speaks and gives that oneness of heart and confirms that right so so we have all these safeguards right um actually if our heart is really you know postured towards god and we have all these safeguards um but the thing is when we go beyond that right when we when we don't consider these safeguards and in our zeal you know i'm not saying that you know people why do people presume some things it's it's because of the zeal it's because of the you know they are so enthusiastic about it they want to do they it's because of their love for god you know the thing is and then they forget to be wise in their zeal so that's the thing yeah so when we have zeal to do god's work we yeah our intention is to do something yeah but the thing is uh, will god not honor the zeal mm-hmm. yeah out of the zeal Okay, I'm just I'm just saying it because you're not using the mic. Okay. Uh, like when we have zeal and when we want to do something for God, obviously God will will God not will God if like out of my zeal I want to do something for God, I want to do something. But if God was not leading me there, if it is not what He wants me to do, but out of my zeal I want to do something, will God honor it and will God make it to come to pass, or will He uh, stop it? So, can you be specific, like out of your zeal, what is it that you want to do, like uh, conduct a meeting or one youth camp? Mm, yeah. So you 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 know you have a zeal, you have a you have a desire. Okay, I want to do this, God. and uh, so the thing is to check the motives of your heart okay why is why is it that you have a zeal you know the motive is actually you know you have a burden for the yeah, burden for the people burden for the youth and you want to do it yes and you go to god and say you know let's say god just gives the approval you know god uh, confirms certain things god uh, gives the resources you know gives the thing and then you go ahead and do it right but what if god is you know kind of checking as in check when i say check you know god is raising a red flag he's saying god god is saying don't do it and then you continue to do that okay so the fruitfulness because of the word because of the spirit there will be some kind of fruit for sure right because god's word works right but is that what god really wanted me to do maybe not but it still it still happens and you know these things okay this is this, these are certain things which are okay which means which, you know there are not let's say life critical consequences but there are some things some decisions which we take like relocating to another place letting go of what i'm doing right now i'm sorry yeah it, things like marriage yeah so where i'm just presuming i'm saying okay god you know It's a nice person, yeah. <laughs> Unbeliever? No, no, no. Nice person, noble person. <laughs> um, and then one day I know that by the way I live, that person will come to Jesus. I. It's one way of evangelizing. <laughs> That's a great presumption. That's a great presumption. It has its consequences. Yeah. So that's the thing. You know, some some things are very. some decisions consequences are very critical some may not and by the grace of god you know you know even those things are kind of i don't know by the grace of god he kind of restores and reconciles and yeah but um, the thing you know the best thing to do is not to get into presumption right right okay
so um what can be our safeguard that is what we want to look at right safeguard is you know 1 Thessalonians 5 where paul writes to the Thessalonian church and then he says don't despise prophecies okay so there can be an, which means that there was an abuse of it in in the early church so he is again warning the warning us he's say uh, warning the Thessalonian church and he's saying don't um you know, uh, don't despise prophecies, right? 1 Thessalonians 5. Um, okay. Um, I think it starts from 16, right? There's an instruction that you can rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything gives thanks. Give thanks for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. So do not quench the work of the spirit. It's like throwing water in the fire, right? Where the fire is burning, so... Don't put out the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's what he's saying. Um, don't quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Okay. Then, verse 21, he says, Test all things. Test all things. Test the prophecy. Don't despise it and reject it. Test all things. Look at the next one. Hold fast to what is good. Okay. So you test it and you hold fast, which means get a good grip on what is good. When you're testing, you get, you see, okay, this is good. You can get a strong grip on it. Hold fast. What does it also mean? It means don't hold fast to what is not good. When you're testing, you see that certain things are good. When you're testing, you see that certain things are not good, meaning they are not of God. They are just a work of the flesh, maybe. Or maybe it's just a good intention. Maybe it's a presumption. Right? Hold fast to what is good, what is of the truth, what is of the spirit. Release. That is what it means, right? The second part of it, it's not, it's not stated, but that is what it means. What is unstated is release or don't hold fast, don't hold tightly to what is not good. But you test it, right? So we test all things. Test the leading of the spirit. God Has God spoken? Has God said? Test it. Right? It is our responsibility to test it, and you know, and and God, being God, you know, He will confirm. Right? God will confirm. God's word will be agree with it. And certain things are like, you know, what if it's a good thing? It's a good thing, but still, you know, um, should I test it? Yes. Right. Okay. Then the second one is. Get godly counsel, so which is the body, the wisdom of God. People as God has put people around us. Why to speak into our lives, right? so we can get godly counsel. There could be certain places. That, there could be what, what we can call as blind spots, right, where we are not aware of our own lives. You know, it's good to be self-aware. We 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 studied that. Uh, we need to be self-aware yesterday, but. But certain things are hidden from us. We think, oh, I'm a great guy. You know, certain things are hidden. We can't see it. Right? And we are not able to reach that place. You know, it's like, you know, some place when your back is scratching, you know, itching, and you're trying your best, but you're not able to reach. And you say, hey, hey can you just scratch here? <laughs> you know, you need that other person to scratch your back. Right? So it's like that. Getting godly counsel, we, we are, you know, we are prone to having blind spots in our lives, but godly wisdom, okay, uh, and uh, and a safe thing would be, you know, especially when it comes to very critical things and, diff, you know, uh, like life changing things, life altering decisions. We are at major crossroads in life. Wait for confirmation. Wait for confirmation. Second Corinthians thirteen one talks about, you know, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. So, get confirmation. And uh, and the basic thing is this: you know, to listen to God in the small things, right? Learn from, like there are things that God leads when we, you know, maybe the in the in the smaller things. Meaning that even if I make a mistake in this, uh, the consequences are not lethal or life damaging, right? So learn to trust God in the small things, so that when we continue to have a lifestyle of trusting God in the small things. When we come to those big crossroads, you know, we have already built up 
this library of testimonies, you know, this library of experiences of being led by God. And we are so intimate being uh, with the ways of God and with the voice of God and, and that whole process of testing, of getting counsel, of getting confirmation. You know, we are doing that, right? We are in the process of doing it so that when it comes to those big crossroads, it doesn't seem it's like a struggle or a or a you know something like a conflict or something that you but this is what you're used to right this is what you do right okay so presumption leads to confusion sometimes error and uh, and because of which there could even be a rejection of truth and um, all kinds of damages right emotionally etc right all kinds now this couple that i talked about went through a season of difficulty challenge right financially emotionally and and they're newly married right they are just adjusting with each other uh setting up a home you know you, you can just imagine the pressure they're going through right so presumption actually leads to all that um so the the way to come out of it is to recognize hey i was wrong you know that's the thing you know i was wrong uh take responsibility for you know whatever it is that we we were wrong with whatever mistake we have made and be willing to work through it, right? Work through the changes that we need to make. So in this case, they got back, they relocated back to where they started from, started to look for a job, you know, got the job, and things things took on, things turned out well after that, right? Um, so that's that's the thing. You know, that's how we come out of the presumption, come out of the consequences of presumption. Okay. Um, okay. I guess we'll stop here, right? Um, and then, yeah, we'll continue next class. Maybe there might be some questions on this. Um, you could make a note of it, keep it. Um, we will learn. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll address it in the next class. And after this, I think there's one more section, and then we'll we'll finish with that, right? Um, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.